All right, I'm gonna go over how to ID an evergreen huckleberry. So first with the leaves, they are alternate, as you can see there. Uh, simple, they have that new growth right at the end there. Egg shaped, they're leathery, uh, serrated, that's a pretty obvious serration. Uh, dark green and shiny on top, and generally about two to five centimeters long. Um, and the next characteristic you want to look for are the flowers. So you have some here. They're pink and bell-shaped, like that. Um, and they tend to cluster at the end of end of the branches. And those guys will turn into that dark, dark purple fruit that's so characteristic of huckleberries. Um, the bark is a medium shade of brown and smooth. It's very smooth and it's a very calm brown. Um, and these guys are bushy erect plants. Pretty obvious when you see them. Uh, but what really gives them away are these are these leaves. Um, so that's really what you want to look for. Uh, they go from Alaska through BC, Washington, Oregon, and California. They like the edge of forests where they can get sunlight but not too much sunlight, kind of like it a little bit mixed. Um, in burns, they found a lot in burned areas. They thrive there. Uh, they're commonly associated with salal, rhododendron, and other annual grasses. The foliage is eaten, so the berries and the and the leaves are eaten by elk, rabbits, deer. Uh, the flowers attract butterflies, and the berries are a good source for a lot of other animals as well, like grouse, chipmunks, and black bears, mice, and birds. Um, these can be eaten as well by humans. They're very popular. Uh, they still make them today in jams and ice creams and all that good stuff, but you can go out and pick them. Um, yeah, the leaves and berries are used in vi high in vitamin C. And they are sometimes used in a tea to lower blood sugar levels for diabetics. So, I hope that when you see this guy, you can now identify him. Okay.